Hi, I'm Susan McNeil Spooler. Welcome to the Ozark Research Institute April 2021 Virtual Conference. 20 minutes of love, light, and learning. Today I'm going to teach you how to water douse, how to find a well. And when you're doing such a task, you'll need some tools. First of all, you'll need L rods because they're shaped like the letter L. A pendulum because we're going to do some map dowsing. And a Y rod. So it's shaped like the letter Y. And I'm going to teach you how to make these tools and I'm going to give you the specific part numbers and dimensions so that you can have tools just like mine. If you don't have access to a store or a place that where you can buy a pendulum, this is my Joe Smith pendulum. Joe was uh, an amazing dowser from Johnson, Nebraska. This is his dancing pendulum. Um, I got this from him many, many years ago. Um, but it's a very balanced pendulum. And you can see where I'm holding the, where I'm holding the chain, it's only a, a couple of inches. And this is where I could say, show me yes. And I'm not making this move. This is just automatically moving. And because I've been dowsing a long time, it'll go fast quickly. And I can say, show me no. And you can see it's going in the opposite, going in the clockwise position. My yes is counterclockwise. My no is clockwise. Okay. So what you can do is you can go to the hardware store and get a plumb bob, which is which looks similar to this. It's a, it's a piece of metal that's um, conically shaped and you can take a chain, put it on it, or you could take a piece of string or you can take elastics. And I'm going to show you here using elastics. I'm going to take one, loop it through like so. Then I'm going to take one end and push it through so it makes itself longer like so. And then I have this um, this piece of a necklace. It's a necklace. I um, I ended up getting this from Sean Zenja, who is a speaker at the West Coast Dowser Conference. He's has an amazing um, crystal shop. So what I'll just do is I'll put this through the um, where you'd put a chain so you could put this around your neck. So let me feed that through and catch it through the other side and then string the other, pe other side of the elastic and then pull it straight through. So you have an end here. And then what I can do is I can hold it down. Generally, you want to hold just a couple inches down. I could say, show me yes. And then show me no. And I have a pendulum. And you know, as you can see, it's kind of like floppy on this side and tighter on that side, but it's not really gonna matter. You know, I could always just kind of take it and straighten it out a bit. It doesn't really matter. Once once you once it's uh balanced, you can just ask, you know, show me yes, show me no. And then when you're down when you're map dowsing, which I'll show you in a bit here, you'll just you'll be asking for a reaction as you're trying to find your uh plot out your spot for your well you could take your car keys and use your car keys too as long as you have you know you have your you have your keychain and you have a couple of keys on it and you could hold it and dangle it and use it as a pendulum in a fix so so that's your first that's your first tool so next we're going to make either we're going to make both a simple and a sensational l rod now, if you want to make a simple L rod, what you can do is you can take a coat, a metal coat hanger, and you can cut it here and here at the top, and then down here at the bottom. And what you'll use, what you will need for that, what I use is I use a very, I use a bolt cutter. So what I'll do here is I will snip it up here, and then here. squeeze it and then that falls on the floor and then you want to sit here and kind of eyeball where the middle is 
And it's okay if it's not exact, it doesn't really matter. And because if you just want to make a start, make a quick pair, that's what you want to do. And you cut it in half like that. Now you have your rod, and then you want to you want to kind of straighten it out. But you want, you know, you can you can have it just be regular, like a regular L rod like this, and hold it in your hand so it'll spin. Or you could um, straighten it out. So, and then figure out how big your hand is. When I was making these initially, these rods back about 20 or so years ago, Joe Smith from Johnson, Nebraska. I'll mention him a few times. He always gave me a lot of good advice. He always said, make sure that the handle is big enough for a Nebraska farmer's hand. He said, make sure that the handle is at least four inches. So I figure I'll, I'll measure here. Do I have a ruler? Yeah, probably. Oh, yeah, I do. So I have a ruler here. And this is a six inch ruler. So figure from here to here is about, it's about four inches from the end here to over here. So maybe four and a half. So what I'll do now is I'll just bend it like so. One way to do it. And then if I want to have, have a sleeve for it, I will take a straw or maybe even a, um, a hollowed out, an older pen or something, a plastic pen. So I'll measure this down, take a pair of scissors and snip it. Now I could remeasure this again, and it comes out to um, there. We go four inches exactly. How about that? Okay, so I'll put this. I'll slide this on, and then I will bend the end. You want to grab your needle nose pliers and bend the end so it doesn't. You want to grab it like this, so it's towards. So you have it almost at the end. And then you want to try to bend it towards the direction that the rod is going in. So that they're both kind of going the same way. But you know what? If you're just doing this quick and dirty, it doesn't really matter. So once you have this, then you have your um, your quick uh, L rod or your simple L rod. Now, if you want to make a fancier L rod that's made of copper, what you would do is contact your local um, welding supply shop. Here in Mass in, in the Northeast, we have air gas. It's air gas, all one word. And you get your, your welding rod material. And the welding rod material comes in a box like this with part numbers on the end and the, this is 36 inches long and I'll be I have the written I'll have the written instructions as well for you um, at the end of this so what you do is you take your rod and you measure it out and you cut it in half so it's um 18 inches long so once you cut this once you cut your rod in half then you have your 18 inch long rod. And what you do at that point is you take your, you want to take a look at the end. Now, some of the ends have, it's it's flat because that's where the, like when with the welders will, will have a, have their needle nose pliers or a special tool to hold on to it as they're, as they're welding or brazing. So you always want to use, put that end at the end of your rod. So you go to the other end, which, we've, which you've snipped in half with your, with your big giant um, bolt cutters. I've got an even bigger pair in the other room. I could go and show you, but they're just, <laughs> they're, they're, they're three feet long. Anyways, my husband likes to buy all sorts of tools. Anyways, so you're looking at the end of this where it's the flat end. So you go to the other end of, the, of your rod here and you take your, your, your needle nose pliers and there's all different sizes of needle nose pliers. I also have a great big pair here too. So you can I can take the big pair, the small pair. I'll just use a small pair because not everybody has all sorts of size tools. And put it up to the end, like so. And then I'll just bend it. So you have a little L at the end. 
now, now what you're going to do, you'll set that down and you'll pick up your copper tubing. Now this is actually, this copper tubing is um, a lot bigger than I normally use, but that's okay. This is all for learning purposes. What you want to get is a pipe cutter. A pipe cutter can be this size and then you'd unscrew it like so. Or there's little, little, little cute ones that you'd also unscrew it and then you'd put your tube in. So again, sometimes what I do by hand as I mark it, I just put my hand on there and I take a magic marker and I'll mark it like so. And if I take my, my little ruler, it's probably four inches because I've been doing this for a long time. And this one's four and a half inches, but that's okay. You just want to make sure if you're doing two of these that they're, the, that they're about the same size if you're that fussy. So you take the rod like so, and then you unscrew and you'd slide it on like so. And then you want to line up the, the, um, the, 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 the sharp little wheel here to where you made your mark. Or if you didn't make a mark, just any old place you feel like it. So you tighten it down like so. You, you squeeze, you do a little bit of a twist. Spin it around like so, a little tighten it a little more, and I can show you what happens if they're kind of making mistakes. So now it's coming off, and that's fine. And that's a nice clean, that's a nice clean end on here. Um, you can always take some out rubbing alcohol and take off the magic mark if you so choose. And the other one I had done earlier. Now, if you see this little piece of the of the uh, of the tool, what you're going to do, you're going to put it inside. You know, you're going to rub out all the burrs. That way, if there's any like little pieces of metal, uh, you'll get them, you'll take them off, and then you won't cut yourself, or nobody else will cut themselves. See, so twist that off, and it's nice and smooth. Kind of widens it out. Now, if you if you do it wrong, if you crush down on it too much initially, it's going to come out like this. I was trying to teach someone a while ago. And you see how it's crushed in the middle. Because they were, they were, they were, they, they, they twisted and they, they clamped down on it too hard and they weren't twisting and then pit spinning it around. They, they didn't do that. And what I do is I make a set, I make rod, make sets of rods for my customers when I go and down as well. So now you have your, your end that you just um, cut off of the tubing. You have your L rod, your, um, your brazing rod. And you stick it over on the end here. And then, so what you'll do is, Lift it up a little bit, so maybe like half an inch, three quarters of an inch, and you want to hold it up and put your little, put your thing, put your paint, pinky in there to hold it up, and then you have that little rod thing facing you. And then what you want to do here is take your rod at the top, and you want to bend it towards you. So then it makes an L rod. And then if it's not exactly going the right way, you take your needle nose plier. Squish, squeeze it, twist it, and make a face. And there we go. So now you have your sensational L rod. And you do that with both of them. And you always want to make sure you have enough play in there so that spin so it spins. If you bend it too short, then you just gotta kinda unbend it and then rebend it again so that you have you have enough play. And you're not whacking yourself in the face. So next, we're going to make our Y rods. Now, I'm going to tell you the part numbers. I get these from these, um, this is polypropylene. These come in eight foot lengths and I cut them into two foot lengths. So for each eight foot length, I could get two, two sets of uh, Y rods out of this. I then get um, Tigon tubing. So what you do is you, you use the you use your bolt cutters, and then you snip you snip the the Y the Y rod material so it's two feet long, and then it's a little bit if it's kind of rough at the end you take a little razor and you cut it. So by using the the um, the razor it'll make a nice smooth end end for you. Uh, then you take your your uh, your your Tigon tubing, and you make sure that if this is a quarter inch if each of these are a quarter inch. Uh, in diameter or across, 
and two of them make half an inch, then you want your inner diameter of your tubing to be a half an inch. So what you do is then you take your tubing and you, you slide it in, and then you have use a hot glue gun and you stick the hot glue gun in one side, squeeze it, get the hot glue in there, and then stick it over on the, on the other side. It's gonna be hot because hot glue can burn. You're gonna be careful with that. And then once that is all cooled down, then you could uh, again, take a razor and then cut it off, cut off any, any spare pieces of oozed out um, um, hot glue. So you have your, your, your tools now. Now to use your dowsing tools, I'll teach you how to use your Y rod first. You want to take the Y rod and put it between your, your, your pinky and your ring finger and your thumb and your pointer finger, like so. Okay? So I go pinky thumb, pinky thumb for both sides. And then you squeeze it, you hold on to it tightly. You hold on tightly, and then you pull it up to pull it up so that the rods are above your head. And then as you're walking and you're asking your questions, you want to be asking where is the best place to drill. Now, there's no way that I can make this come down with my will. So I'm, I'm thinking in my mind as I'm walking this plus the spot outside and the rod comes down and there it goes. So that's how I use the rod. Now, initially, I am going to show you a video of how I approached the well site out, outside with snow on the ground and wearing my snowshoes. Now, when you're dousing a well, you want to be asking specific questions. You want to ask for potable water or drinkable water that tastes good, that smells good, that's there year round, that's primary water, that's at an appropriate depth, appropriate gallons per minute, easy for the well driller to get to, and beneficial to all who drink it. Now, primary water is water that has never been used per se. It's water that's down into the earth, and it's much deeper than groundwater. Now, groundwater can be from, say, 12 to 20 feet down. Um, it, your groundwater would be affected by, say, fertilizer that you use, or if, if someone spilled some oil or gasoline that could potentially be contaminated. So when you're doing a well that's going to be drilled, you want to make sure that you're searching for primary water. When we're working with to find the well site, we then ask for, if you're standing on the edge of the property, you then the rod will then point after you get your yes or no, if there's a yes, that's great. And then the rod will point to what part of the property the well site is on. So then what we do, as we follow the rods, and then as we're walking, I'll say, show me the edge of the, of the vein, if there's a vein there, and the rods will open up. Then, once I find the edge, I will pull out my flags, my marker flags. Now, generally, I, I carry a couple of different colors of marker flags because as you'll see when you have the out, when you watch the outside portion of this, you'll have all the same color. So I'll have for the the edge of the vein, and you'll have a different color for um, where you would want to drill. So so you place these on the ground, the the marker flags, and then once you place once you place the marker flags on the first edge of the vein, then you're dowsing again, and you'll say, show me the other side of the water vein. And then the water, and then the vein, the rods will open up. And then so you place the same, and you place the same color, and then you place the same color marker flags. Then once you have your path, once you have your path to where your where your water vein is, you pull out your Y rod, and you walk in between where you put the flags. And then you ask, where's the best place to, to drill the well? And as you're walking along, and I like to focus when I'm dowsing, and the rod goes down. Now, if I'm wearing, you know, generally as I'm walking and doing this, the rod will snap down on several places. Then I'll take another color. This is a pink flag, and the other flags I have here are yellow. You can buy 
You can buy them in packs of 10 at the hardware store. You can order them through the hardware store. They come in green and blue and yellow and red and pink and orange. And I like, you know, especially in the winter time when I'm dowsing wells in the snow, I like to have stuff that really stands out. So once we, once I get a couple of spots, once uh, identified using the Y rod and it marks out, I use the other color flag. Then I go and I do what's called triangulation. And that means I'm approaching that spot from, well, tri, T-R-I, that means three, generally from three different directions to make sure that I'm getting the right spot on that water vein. Because you may have a water vein, but what happens is sometimes there'll be rocks, sometimes there'll be tree uh, roots, Sometimes, who knows what's underneath the ground that someone might have buried, buried treasure, maybe it's buried treasure. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a treat? Anyways, and so that you, so you don't want to uh, find a spot where the well driller will drill down and, and have a catastrophe. So, uh, so that's what you're doing um, when you're trying to find the well site. Now, when, uh, once you find your well site, you wanna find how many gallons per minute, and how many feet they have to drill. <clears throat> now, what I do, I will take my L rod and I will get a sense of how deep the, um, the well will be. This conference will now be recorded. So once I get a sense of how deep I, I believe the, the well should be, I will say, I ha I'll have a, an invisible pie chart in front of me. It goes from left to right a half pi. Yeah, my left hand over here will be zero, and my right hand will be 500 feet. And then, and that'll just be because I've already asked, is the well site less than 500 feet? And I'll say, I'll use my rods or whatever. I just know. I just get a sense of knowing. So this well, it's in the where I doused. Well, I'll be showing you soon here. Uh, will the well driller have to drill less than 500 feet? And I get a yes on that. So, so now I hold the rod here at zero. And if you recall, 500 is over by my right shoulder. I center myself, body, mind, and soul, I focus. And then how many feet will the, will the driller have to drill? So we're at 250 here. All right, so somewhere between 250 and 300-ish. So then when I get numbers like that, I say, okay, I use my figures, 250, 260, 270, 261, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 262, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67. So 267, 267 feet that they would have to drill to hit water. Now, how many gallons per minute will I get? This is zero and this is 25. Because when you're working with a customer, you wanna find out um, how many people are living in the house, what do they wanna use, the, use the water for? Is it for just a couple? Is it for a family of four? Um, are they going to use it for irrigation? Are they gonna feed their animals? Are they going to have a garden? Um, so if you sit and you look at a gallon a minute is after, if, so if you're getting a gallon a minute, that's 1,440 gallons in a 24 hour period. Some cities or towns require you to have five gallons per minute if you're going to have uh, irrigation. But again, if you have one gallon a minute, then that's 1,440 gallons in a 24 hour period, because if there's six, you know, a gallon per minute, there's 60 gallons in an hour. Then 60 times 24 is 1,440. So now I'm going to douse how many gallons per minute this well will yield Okay, so if this is 25, this is 12 and a half, you're looking at about 10, 9, 10 gallons a minute. So what I'll do, I'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Seven, eight, nine. I, I I do it a couple times just to make sure. So this will give nine gallons per minute. So that's a lot of that's a lot of water. And if it's if it's a constant, if it's going to be there year round, that's terrific. 
then that's plenty of water for this family. So now for this household, you're looking at um, a gallon, nine gallons a minute, there's 540 gallons for an hour, and then 12,960 gallons for a 24 hour period. So there's plenty of water going through and they'll have wonderful tasting water that doesn't smell um, and it will be beneficial to them. So that's, that's terrific. Once you have your spot that you know is the best place to drill the well, you want to get out your paint. I use um, this Krylon marking wand, and I also have a different one that's much longer, that has a wheel on the end. You stick a wheel here, and then you can just kind of walk along, and you have, to bend, you have to bend over so many times, depending on your physical fitness. And so, as you can see, I'm using pink paint, because pink will show up best on the white snow. And what I do is, when I have the uh, the marker flag placed. I then take the paint, uh, the uh, the paint, and I I just hit I do a spritz, and then I build, and then I I create a bullseye around it. So that way, if someone comes along and then picks up the flag, the marker flag, you still know where you're going to drill. And I learned that the hard way. I learned that because I had a little girl <laughs> that was walking behind me, what one customer site. And she was picking up all the flags. And when I turned around, she had all the flags in her hand. And she's waving them at me. <laughs> her father and I get a kick out of that. When you go out on a jowsy job, what I bring along with me is a bucket. I get a, I use the Home Depot buckets because they're brightly colored. Because I'm out, I'm out in the woods. Um, and I have to set this down. I want to be able to see it. So... Besides my tools, I also bring a, um, a measuring tape, and I believe this one's 300 feet. Yes, this one's a this one's 300 feet long, and I like this one because you pull it out, but then you can crank it back in, and it's and it's easy to use. And it also has a pointy thing at the end. Oops, I broke that. So then that way you can hold it exactly on a certain spot because other uh, issues that come up when you're dowsing a well site for customers is that they need the, that the well will have to be so far from the house, from the road, from a property line, from a structure like a barn, and so many feet from a septic system. Um, every town is different, so you want to make sure when you're talking to your customers to have them find out this information ahead of time because um, depending on how much property they have, it may not be a big deal, but on some towns, if they have a small piece of property, they would then have to, if their well was too close to their septic or the road or their house or something, they then would have to go to before the planning board or before the um, the, the health department and get what's called a variance. And that would be permission to then put the uh, well uh, in, in, the, in the place that's within the, um, the, the town's structure and what their rulings are as to how far it can be from any place. Now, when we are about to do map dowsing, which, are, which we're going to do right now, we want to make sure we say, I center myself, body, mind, and soul. That helps to center you um, and to get you into a, a meditative state prior to dowsing. You also want to ask, on this property here, on this map, for the following, the following parameters. Potable water or drinkable water that tastes good, that smells good, that's there year round, that's primary water, that's appropriate depth, and it's appropriate gallons per minute, easy for the well driller to, to get to, and beneficial to all who drink it. Now, I'm going to take my pendulum, and I'm going to ask, show me yes, that's counterclockwise, and show me no, and that's clockwise. So I'm going to ask, of these, uh, of these parameters that I've just asked for, will I find a water vein or a water source 
on this property that I just asked for. And I'm getting a yes. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to take my pendulum. I'm going to push it up the side. I'm going to push it up the, um, the map here until I get a reaction. Now I'm getting a reaction right here. And I can mark right here. And I'm going to go up the map as I do this. So my next spot. here generally I go for about five markings on a map like this I'll push this up and slowly and get another rock right here Four. I'll do one more. And five. Okay. So now that we have these five markings on the map, I'm going to go across. I'll take this mark and I'll just go across each one until. I get a spot on here, okay? I'm gonna just use my finger. So I'll go start here. Okay, it's one here. Here. I'll make X's or plus signs. Now what you can do, once you have these spots, you can unconnect them. Then you can ask if there are any other veins uh, that are going to be going across here on this area. And I can say, I could go the first one. Let's see if I have kidding mine. Okay, no. No, I'm getting a yes here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go across again and get another marking right here. Now what I can do is connect these two as well. And you see how there's a, it bisects, there's two, there's two spots that go over each other. And if you recall, when we were outside, I triangulated and I found a spot that I approached from this way, the rods opened up, and, and I found the other, and then I got on one side of the, of the, uh, the vein, I made a, um, I put the marker flags down and then I found the other side of the vein where I put the marker flags down. And then I walked it between the flags. I put the flags down, the, the blue is the flags. And then I walked it 
and I asked for my dowsing rods, my Y rod to come down. And then what that did is it then came down right here. And then we remember we did triangulation. I, I approached it from several different angles to make sure that that was the spot that we wanted to have uh, for the best spot to drill for a water well.